Yo, uh, Zilly Hoon is back. Um, I guess this used to be a German channel. I don't know. I feel like talking English right now. Um, yes, so if you haven't seen the crazy information video already, we got a new host. I spent some money on a big hardware upgrade. Um, so we got a better CPU and um, more RAM and yikes. I think also faster hard drives. I'm not too sure about that. Um, okay, yeah, much more details. So uh, the domain zilihoon.com is still valid for Laser Um but the IP address changed. I, yeah, I don't know. I, d I don't feel like giving too much um, information about that uh, right now. This is not an information video. This video will be more like a, a stress testing video. Um, so I will, um, yeah, yet again, um, breed some cows and test how many, how many um, entities this uh, hardware can handle. I did that with my laptop setup as a, a backup um, server um, already and my, my laptop could handle it quite well. But um, yeah, a laptop is not like the ideal um, server location. So this is now a better server. It's in a actual data center um, with a better network connection and uptime than my uh, laptop. Uh, here at my uh, home, um, yeah, connection. Um, so it's time for another stress test and see how it performs. Um, oh yeah, and I renovated the base. I um, removed some chests and I fully automated this um, this gold farm because. Back in the days, I had to like punch the pigments. Now they fully automatically die. Um, yeah, and overall, like I, yeah, I improved it a bit. Haha, <laughs> no, jokes aside, I got uh, griefed two times. Um, I think first leader found the space. Um, well, he told me he found it and he, he left some signs here and he destroyed some of my chests, I assume. Um, and then somebody else who was a little bit more uh, rude, I would say, found it as well and grieved the text from leader. leader. So leader used to have uh, like a, uh, a big uh, text here. How, how are those called? Like a, yeah, like leader written in, in, in mushroom and now yeah, that got grieved and everything looks way worse. So yeah, I got I got found two times and yeah, that's what you get um, when you publish videos leaking the coordinates of your base and <clears throat> also having plenty of trails uh, towards this base. It looks like the second griefer was somebody like Infsec OP. Um, I don't know, I probably mispronounced that and insulted somebody who will return and grief me again um, because I decided to rebuild it, um, especially the part um, yeah, from the gold farm uh, was uh, kinda un um, unusable, it was so destructed so I rebuilt a lot of that. Mm. Luckily the, the cow farm was untouched so um, there were not a lot of cows um, because I killed them already all, but um, yeah, it was not griefed. That's um, that's very lucky for my uh, stress testing um, plan. So I can yeah just just breed them again. Um, yes. Other than that, is there anything I I wanted to mention? Um, yeah, not really. We're still running in vanilla. Um, I set the slots from 20 to 160 just for like lols. Uh, but um, I doubt the server can handle 
160 players in a like um yeah go wild mode right so um maybe like 160 chilled players with some plugins to improve performance in the same chunk or whatever i don't know what the um, performance bottlenecks of minecraft are but um yeah i doubt the server can handle uh 160 uh players simul simul <clears throat> jeez i cannot pronounce that word simultaneously um you know what i mean uh speed hacking around the map and uh tnt duping lag machines whatever uh with big uh animal farms or whatever um i assume the server um can die already with a lot less players but i don't know since there's um not a lot of players um that want to join anyways i guess if the slots are above 15 it doesn't matter what the actual number of the slots are um yeah so that also might change in the future but um that's that for now okay then i would say it's time to uh, pump our today's talk it's about um yeah it's it's another defcon talk and i didn't record those videos in a while back then when i used to do it like 24 7 i had like this whole flow, um, I don't know how it will will work this time. And I'm pretty sure I did it in German, so um, let's see. So we're watching a video from the channel of the DEF CON conference. Um, I hope my like um, five subscribers are not pure German and not super upset, but yeah, let's be honest, nobody watches these videos anyways. Um, yeah, so we're watching a video from the DEF CON conference from 2018, it has 20,000 clicks. And it has the title DEFCON 26 Champion and Law Building the Hacker Tracker. That's a funny uh, title because it's a uh, hacker tracker, right? Mm -hmm. Funny bunny. Um, I would say let's let's get started. Then I'm I'm out and I give the mic to Mr. Champion and Law. Hey, so right off the bat, I just want to say that. Jeez, she's cute. Can, can I like, do I still have the video open? She's cute, isn't she, right? No, like, um... Disappointed that my like talks on security <coughs> no, whatever. testing just mm -hmm. don't get this many people, right? <laughs> that's probably more important, so we're just gonna switch it up and that's what we're gonna talk about instead. Okay, now, all right, all right, all right. we'll talk about the hacker tracker. Um, so right off the bat, I'm Seth Law. I'm an application security consultant. I've done development in the past. Uh, I actually started my career at iOmega. Anybody here remember the zip drive? Yeah. yeah? Okay, I was not responsible for the click of death. That was not me. Blame the, the hardware engineers, right? If you lost data, that was not my fault. That dates me. I've been around for a long time. I've been coming to DEF CON since DEF CON 8 or something like that. Um, but now I just do application security work. I'm an independent consultant. So that's me. I do the iOS version. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Whitney really quick. Sure. this work. Um, hi everyone, I'm Whitney Champion, short stack. Um, I've been doing the Android version of Hacker Tracker since 2012. Um, so um, I'm a systems engineer out of South Carolina. Android is a hobby for me, that's why this guy is here now. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for coming. Hey guys, uh, I'm Chris, uh, also known as Advice Dog. Um, I met Whitney at DEF CON 24 and started talking to her about uh, Hacker Tracker because I liked using it, but I was like, I, I feel like it could be better, right? I don't even um, know what Hacker Tracker is. Source, can, so I was really excited. Can I'm like, oh, please I can tell totally me. commit to this. You know, I can change things. Um, and I started talking to her, and she was totally cool with me changing things. So I joined the team, started working things, and I took over def, uh, the, the Android version for uh, Hacker Tracker it, for 25 and 26, so the current version, yeah. Uh, I've done a ton of rewrites. Pretty much, it's a... Whenever I'm bored, I guess, I just look at Hacker Tracker and I'm like, how can it be better? Um, so any performance you enjoy, yeah. I spent way too much time on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that, that is a running theme as we spend too much time on it. I've got my family here. They know, like, the last couple of weeks, especially every spare moment of my time has been, all right, can I get this in so I can get it into the App Store so we can actually get it into the iOS version? 
Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is where it came from. I joined the Hacker Tracker team, or the iOS version was uh, started in about 2014, I think it was. Something like that, right? So it was a couple years after Whitney did the first one. So we'll let her talk about what she came up with, and then we'll move on to you know when iOS came and you know how we've done things. What happened was. <laughs> what had happened was. Um, so I wasn't able to go to DEF CON in 2012. Um, I've been coming since 2009. I was really bummed that I couldn't be there that year. So I wanted to give back in some way. I still wanted to contribute. Um, I was pregnant and couldn't leave. So I spent probably two months pretty much pouring my heart into the, what was the first version of Android, which is what you see here, which is. Don't knock the awesome Photoshop skills. I know mm -hmm. it's just mind blowing, but <laughs> that if if you came the first uh, first version was like 2012, 2013. That is what it looked like, and it's just beautiful. Um, so that was the first four years, and as Seth said, he joined a couple years later and did the iOS version. The iOS version, you'll notice that that you know that all the all the margins are off and things like that. We had a lot to learn about actually how to put this together. Um, again, you know, awesome Photoshop skills. As you can see nowadays, we've got actual design. Uh, Leute, um, I switched to German. I'm yeah. Now I'm a hundred percent sure that I recorded the videos in German usually. Um, but let me quickly check what Hacker Tracker is. So then this talk makes a little bit more sense. So yeah, I assume it's a app, but what does it do? Oh, it's on GitHub. That's awesome. Yeah, a copyright notice is from 2018 on the website, so make sure to claim it. <laughs> um, Defcon Hacker Tracker. Short stack. Um, simple to read. Is it for hacker news or what is it? No. Remote management engine. What does it do? What, what does it? I cannot. I cannot. Um, yeah, I, I don't get it. Maybe they explain it in the talk. There's no like summary of what it does. I'm just stupid. Hackers that work with this a little bit. Uh, we'll get into that. Um, a bit later, but you know, the first iOS version, I think the version that made it through the, the app store that most of the attendees downloaded actually crashed for the first two days of the conference, right? It was not necessarily, in my case, it's a successful effort. I remember being pretty disappointed that I couldn't push through the version that I wanted people to have. Um, and that's traditionally, that's what happens to us is we, we have these ideas. Chris pushes something, we talk about it, we put it into the app, and then whether or not it actually makes it out to you is another story. Um, that being said, we've had a lot of great feedback, so we'll step into some of that here in a, here in a minute. Um, now it's official, right? This is, this makes us happy. Uh, DEF CON actually brought us on board, when was that? Uh, 20, it was right after you joined. Yeah, so it was what, 2015, 2016? Yeah. Yeah. 2016, I think it was, was the first year that Hacker Tracker was the official app of DEF CON. Um, okay. And now, uh, actually, Chris and I this year are members of the Info Booth team. Uh, so we are related to the guys that you're seeing sitting around in the booths telling you about maps and other things. We're working with them closely. Uh, Mellows helped us out uh, immensely to actually get events and get them into the application. Um, but we are the official application for DEF CON. Obviously, that's why we're here. That's why they promote it at each of those info booths. It's so that you have this information at the palm of your hands. I mean, part of the reason that I wanted to do it initially was the fact that I, I had the booklet and it just wasn't tenable. I had my phone with me as well, and I got involved because I wanted to be able to track all these different events and actually do something. I saw that Whitney had the Android version and thought, yeah, we can do that on iOS as well. Pain points. Now, there are a lot of pain points. Um, first off is scheduling. You want to talk about this? Yeah, so scheduling for the first like three, well, well actually until this year when, so Seth will uh, get into his part of this after I talk about how difficult hand jamming thousands of lines of JSON was for the first several years. Um, it was mind numbing. <laughs> the other part was all the villages, all the um, like contests, all the events, all the talks. Everything was in a different format, so there was no like easy way to go scrape every website. There was no easy way to get all the data. It was 
very much a manual process. So I don't know how Looks many good over here. hundreds of hours we spent staring at these files, but my Worst God, I'm this ever. Um, especially this year, there's what, like 28 villages, something like that, and the space every is still single so one usable. has a different format. So hopefully that will That's a quick repair. ease up um, going forward. So if, yeah, if, yeah, you, nice. if you've never handwritten JSON files and made sure that the modified date has changed at 2 a.m., you just haven't experienced joy, right? <laughs> it, it, it's really easy to do and really easy to mess up, and then the application crashes. Or if you're dealing with the iOS, you know, JSON parser and happen to have an errant, you know, uh, new line character inside of a string, you want to know what happens to iOS? Yeah, it crashes, right? So there's all of these pain points that we have dealt with with the schedule. Uh, now the, the next one is, you know, don't trust the hackers. Um, the first, well, I mean, as soon as I got involved, we started advertising out on Twitter, hey, guess what, we've got this app that we built for DEF CON. How many people do you think actually downloaded the app that first year? Guesses? Five? There's some trusting people. There's more trusting people out there than that. But our, our biggest response on Twitter was exactly this. No, 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 there, there's no way I'm downloading that, yeah. right? You know, you, you guys are shady. It doesn't matter that the source code was all out there. They're like, who are you nerds putting out this app, especially for the Android version, because you know that that's just kind of a free for all. But they're like, there's root kits, don't do it. There's, they're gonna take your data, they're gonna steal your pictures, don't install any of it. <laughs> so, Classic. so the answer is yes, we have all your data. Right. Just, let's just get that out of the way. We'll move on. You weren't supposed to say that. No, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, the other thing is bug fixes at all hours. Um, how many people here are actually like, and, uh, iOS developers that push things into the App Store. We got a couple of you. I feel your pain. Um, how easy is it to actually push bug fixes into the App Store quickly? Easy? No, it's very difficult, right? Um, and we'll get into this in a little bit. But you know, this was realistically our lives over, especially the month before DEF CON, right? Is the bug fixes and when it actually has to happen. See, I had the luxury of being able to blast anything to production at three o'clock in the morning after six shots, and who knows what's going to happen. So that was that was a toss up between Android and Apple for us. Yeah. yeah. Seth had a little more uh, validation on his end. I did, and it's it's about finding time. I mean, obviously we we've got normal jobs, right? I guess kind of normal jobs, normal jobs. Um, and so actually finding the time to put this together, it's not necessarily something that you know just happens in one afternoon as much as we would like to think we're great developers. There's always bugs, there's always things that... Uh, it that, doesn't happen in the afternoon. No, it just doesn't happen in the afternoon. It happens at 3 a.m. Right. when you push directly to master. That's when it happens. After the kids go. Yeah. All right, waiting on redacted. Anybody seen like uh, the, the mobile operating system? in the iOS version? Yes. Why, why do you think that is? Okay, this is the app review process. Okay, we get random people that are looking at the application. And I've marked the app as explicit, but you want to know what, uh, all right, so, so it's okay for in the app for us to say damn and hell and shit and everything else, but you know what I can't say? Jailbreak. Mm -hmm. I can't say that, that's not okay. Um, so last year, especially, this became a huge issue. I've had, I, I, I've had, I just got rejected, you know, three days ago again on the latest version that I want you guys to have in your hand for iOS, and it's because it says hack, and it says, uh, you know, there's other things that are in there that whoever it is that's in the app review process that's looking at the application actually thinks is, hey, you're promoting hacking. There's like the whole Apple terms of service and. I, like we're, we're doing our best is realistically what it is and we're coming up with ways to actually get around this so the redacted in there that you're seeing is because we yeah we've just learned that if we do that if we take out the term watch os or we take out the term mac os that they accept it uh but if we don't and it happens to be in somebody's talk then they won't right so i feel really bad for the, the speakers whose whose title of their talk is jailbreaking mac os or something like that because it's you know uh redacting redacted os right and <laughs> sorry uh, that's all we, that's all i can do I, I'm, I'm we're doing our best okay so last year we did it we did a big overhaul um, and even this year you'll notice it's a lot different than those images that we put up there first um, i'll let uh chris talk to the android version first uh, 
Sure. So DEF CON 25 was the first version that I came on to it. So I did a ton of different changes and all that stuff. So pretty much from the ground up, I rebuilt the app probably multiple times over the year just because I got a lot of free time. Um, but like a lot of the focus is just trying to figure out exactly how we can make a like a hacker conference good in terms of schedule because we don't really know. There's like guidelines, I guess, out there of like what we could do and what we can't do. But we're trying to figure out exactly what kind of information you need and like what you want and everything like that. So we're also trying to do a lot of stuff, just like everything from the ground up, rebuild it and make it impressive, you know, from like, and like I've rebuilt it multiple times also for DEF CON 26. Um, like for last example, for last year, uh, Hacker Tracker on Android was about 19 megabytes. This year it's about 4.2. Uh, it is insanely small. It should be the fastest, smallest app on your phone, hopefully. Uh, and that's pretty much what I've been doing, is just trying to make the best app for you guys, you know. Because I found, if, if I hate it, then you're probably going to hate it, you know. If it bugs me, it might bug you, but it'll probably bug you eventually. Yeah, so the whole idea is that we want it to bug you, right? Like, I, I, I even just saw a bug pop up on my phone on the reminders for iOS that's um, but last year we did a pretty extensive overhaul of iOS as well. Um, we've got the animations that are in there. If you've seen like the little jitter as it starts up, you know, that's us still. I mean, that's us just animating the initial screen that you're on, right? There's, it's not sending data anywhere, right? Um, but along those lines, we've upgraded, right? We don't we don't support iOS nine anymore. I, like I may try and push a version out there, especially for those of you that have burner phones that have decided that that we're all going to hack you because you're here. Um, yeah. So uh, we may support that in the, in the future. Uh, I'll do some downgrades to make sure that we can actually support some of those older versions of iOS. Uh, That's that a struggle. is kind of a forward looking thing. When I tried to compile it initially, I got a whole bunch of... Guys, he's looking forward to look backward. Deep shit. <laughs> for iOS 9 Jesus Christ. Okay. There's only so much time in the day. Um, the other thing that we did last year was the UI redesign. We actually engaged with a graphic designer, um, Chris Mays, who may be here in the room somewhere. Chris, are you here? All right. I don't see him. Chris uh, actually uh, worked for a company last year, and their graphic designer was willing to chip in um, and help us actually do some of the UI design. So a lot of the elements that make it look a little bit more polished came from her. Uh, that was Megan. She's listed in the iOS app. Um, and it, it, it has made things more streamlined. It's made it easier to actually use and navigate. Uh, the one thing that we did away with this year was the uh, tab bar down at the bottom for iOS. We moved to the menu. Oh, so nice. we're Come. trying to get more of a unified look and feel. Uh, the other thing is we do support multiple conferences. Has anybody here used Hacker Tracker at a different conference? Oh, we had a couple. Okay. Yeah, they're nowhere near as big as DEF CON. DEF CON is definitely our primary conference, uh, but we support uh, ShmooCon, TourCon, we did HackWest, we did a, a couple B-Sides events during the year. So if you would like to use Hacker Tracker at other conferences, just hit us up on Twitter. It's not difficult. We've structured the app so we can load different conferences in there and make it easier to use and, and a community resource. The whole idea is the code's out there, it can be reused. These other conferences could compile it, but we've got the ability to actually switch and use it within the same interface, okay? All right, so high points. So I think one of the most fun parts of the last few years um, that we've had is hiding Easter eggs in the app. So um, uh, several people have come to me to hide things for different contests, um, specifically the DC Darknet Challenge. That's been one of my favorites because we've done that probably three three years now. Um, we One year I hid a password in the app and a bunch of you came to me to get the most ridiculously dumb unicorn sticker and I don't know why any of you took the time to come find it because it's horrible, but there it is. Um, Seth uh, went to the trouble of making stickers and hiding things in the iOS version as well. So it's it's been a lot of fun to like engage everybody and just try to do whatever we can oh to get God, other dude. contests and events of all involved. <laughs> the unicorn sticker. Jesus. <laughs> this has been especially interesting. Um, we've gotten good attendee feedback, we've gotten bad attendee feedback, and we've gotten weird attendee feedback. But the good attendee feedback has been by and large the best. Um, 
especially since Chris joined and didn't put in a lot of work. Um, I don't have nearly as much time anymore to, to contribute, so he's done a huge, uh, it's been a huge effort on his part um, to make it as awesome as possible for you guys on his end, and, and so is Seth. So the reviews that you guys have given us are just amazing, and especially like the ideas you've come back with, like feature requests, bug fixes, bug reports, like all that stuff has been amazing. So just like keep sending that because it helps us and it helps us make it better. Yeah. Ouch. Just one thing, okay? If you, if you review us four stars and say some schedule items are wrong, just hit us <laughs> on Twitter, please. Don't yeah. don't ruin our rating. We're, we're trying, you know, hit us on Twitter, we'll fix Scheduling it. Scheduling is hard. The app, rate it eventually. Because all the negative feedback, I get an email, I read it, I get depressed, it's not great. Think about my feelings, right? Don't make Chris cry. Don't make Chris cry. <laughs> Sick touch. This is Ball. probably my favorite email I've gotten so far. Um, uh. There have been a lot of worse ones, but this is definitely the, the best. My email's been hacked. When I reply to certain people, that tells me it came back unreadable with crazy text covering up my info. But bottom line, the last part's the best. If it does, will it report the hacker to the police? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, it will not. I never heard back from this guy. Uh, oh, I didn't just wait. My email has been hacked. Will it report the hacker but tells me it kicked? My email's been hacked. When I reply to certain people that tells me it came back unreadable with crazy text covering up my info. But bottom line, the last part's the best. If it does, will it report the hacker to the police? <laughs> No. <laughs> um, it will not. I never heard back from this guy. Um, I also did not respond. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I thought about it, but he says, I've been having issues with cyber stalking, so I, uh, I decided to avoid that one. So, uh, like we were saying last year, uh, Chris took over the Android version. Chris Mays uh, has helped me out immensely on the iOS version. Um, he's like a full-time iOS developer. Uh, he's on the he's in the app. If you if you see his name, you know, click on him, give him kudos as well because he's been a huge help in actually debugging and making sure that the app runs expectedly. It doesn't crash. Um, you know, a lot of good just kind of overall design patterns and things like that have come from his brain. Um, the good stuff. I was hoping he was here so we could, you know, recognize him a little bit, but that's fine. But otherwise, right, just getting feedback from you has been the best thing, right? If you use the app and there's something that bugs you, like Chris said, let us know. Tell us about it. If you haven't downloaded the app, go download the app and use it. Make sure and update the events because it is being updated every, yeah, pull, pull to, pull down to update because that'll actually get you the latest results and the latest uh, events that are going on and what's going on right now. Um, but let us know if those are wrong, but also let us know if there's something in the app that, if that is an issue, especially if the app crashes. Right? So we've got a whole bunch of lessons learned, right? Um, first of all, haters are going to hate. Yeah, you so don't some say. of you are mean, okay. just saying. <laughs> um, the first couple of years, the well, first four years, um, at least for my end, was soloing this, which means like a lot of late nights staring at this. And then I would get on the reviews page and I'm like, holy shit, you people can be evil. I mean, we already know this because we're on Twitter. We've seen the worst of the internet, but um, uh, I think Twitter, the worst started. of the internet, <laughs> okay. Thick skin over the years. Um, so yeah, the three of us have poured a lot into this and we've realized you can't please everybody. So the best we can do is just try to make it as good as we can for all of you guys. But I will say it has been highly entertaining <laughs> reading some of the stuff that we've gotten over the last, what, six years? Yeah. I don't know what you got on your end. Oh, all the iOS developers, they're totally trustworthy and nice people. <laughs> Um, the other thing we've learned is that, like, taking feedback, right? Obviously, Twitter is a great way to do this. Um, you can hit us up. That's why our handles are there in the application. But aside from that, if you hit us up on GitHub, that's where we're actually tracking the code. 
um, and you put in a you know pull request or you put in an issue, uh, we will track it in there and close it out so you know that, that, that we've looked at it and we've done something with it. Yeah, yeah that's the best idea. Um, we I agree. Have to wait. I, I have to wait. I have to wait. I have to wait. Like I said, there's a version that's out there that's hopefully going to be released soon. Um, I get denied on expedite requests. Um, I, I'm waiting on jailbreaks, whatever, right? Um, you know, the, the other thing that I was thinking is that we could push it to like Cydia, uh, the, you know, the jailbreak store. Um, is anybody here using a jailbroken device, even as a burner? So, I, I mean, if there's enough of you that are doing it, then I'll look into it and we'll push it that direction. Because it'd be a lot easier for me to, be, to push in there for Saric than it is to actually push into the app store. I just am not sure if Apple's going to be too happy about that. You never know. Backup plans. You have to have backup plans, right? I think we kind of learned Jesus that we don't Christ. have a solid backup plan. What a creepy picture. <laughs> um, so we've we've tried various different ways of scheduling, and this my neighbor is going wild. I don't know if you can hear it. Over the last, I don't know how long you've been working on the on your uh, event yeah. manager. So um, we've tried pulling from the info booth, we've tried static JSON, so we've tri kind of tried to combine the two of those and have some like main dashboard for um, loading all of the events and because it's just gotten so big and so many villages and so many pieces of this that we've, we've got to streamline it some more. Yeah, guesses on how many events we have in the Hacker, in hacker Tracker this year. All of them. Um, I wish, but I don't think we have gotten there. How much? Do you, how many did you say? Okay, keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Close. Just under 1,000. We're probably around 800 right now that you can actually do, and that's between parties, events, and all of the different talks, contests, um, and yeah, especially the villages. I, I mean, we, we're at 25 plus villages this year, and each village is basically its own conference. Right? Some of those villages, the con like the content that is there, is bigger than the other conferences that we've been talking about. Uh, so you know, <laughs> we're trying to give you ways to actually filter oh, I, things and actually, you know, I do didn't know that. That's where you're going to have to become familiar with to actually get that data back. Okay. okay so going forward, first of all, we we want it to be more streamlined. The whole process, from the feedback to you to actually us getting the features out. Um, the iOS Android parody to make sure that they look somewhat similar so the experience on both is the same. Now that is difficult based on the design patterns from Android or from Google versus the design patterns from Apple, uh, but there's a lot of different apps that do this. We're, gonna, we're kind of creating our own look and feel and we will be you know, maintaining that parody to some extent, right? Um, the scheduling application, like Whitney said, we built a back end to Hacker Tracker. Um, and if you can find it, insert an event, uh, kudos to you, right? Um, that's, uh, yeah, that would be a challenge, but most likely you won't be able to, to figure out where it's at. So it's fine. Um, it's fine. Don't worry about challenged it. Challenged. I know I did. That was stupid. <laughs> um, I have been here for too long. That's enough. Yeah, so the scheduling application is going to make this a lot easier. We are coordinating, like I said, with the info booth. Uh, next year, I, we're probably going to take over info.defcon.org, right? Um, and so we're hoping that we'll be able to bring that into parity with what the app looks like. Uh, <laughs> if you are interested and have development skills and want to jump in and help us out, let us know. I, we're always looking for more people to help. I mean, how many hours did you spend inputting? Yeah, if anybody uh, likes data entry, <laughs> join us. We need a mindless factotum. Yes. Who's out there? You can't leave until we find one. Come on. <laughs> uh, more conferences. Like I said before, uh, if you're attending a conference and they don't have a scheduling application, 
let us know. We'd be happy to add that data to Hacker Tracker to the back end and actually push that out so it becomes more useful. Uh, realistically, we want this as the go-to for not just DEF CON, but for the community, for the wider security community, or a uh, development community for that matter. I mean, how many people have used an app? Have, did you use the Black Hat app this year? How awesome was that? Yes, that was great. Yeah, no? Okay, all right. Well, that, that's all I'll say on that. <laughs> Feedback is always welcome. Yeah. Oh, did you want to say something? I know. Um, so, as always, uh, yeah, like Seth said, feedback is always welcome. Um, hit us up on GitHub, hit us up on Twitter if you want to contribute. Do so. It's all open source, it's all out there. Um, the three of us are responsive pretty much all the time. Yeah. So <laughs> if you want to contribute, please do. We would love to have you and we would love to help. Yeah. Okay, it's open source, but please don't be too critical. We're on a time crunch. Things are messy. We'll fix it up later. Next year. Next will be better. <laughs> Any questions? I, I, I think we only have a couple of minutes before the DEF CON 101 panel is coming in here. Yeah. So closed source is an excuse to have dirty code? All right. Um, yeah, whenever on iOS, whenever you pull on Android, there is a pull. Could be ten minutes. Could be fifteen minutes. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> mainly look how Android and Work Manager. I kind of specify seven days, but it'll kind of hopefully if you're on Wi-Fi, it's like oh, I'll do it now or whatever. You know? But, but you can also do it manually. Yes. So you also turn we're we're throwing in updates like this whole week. It's been pretty much hourly that we've been adding events. So just. Yeah, refresh. just swipe down. Just like when you go to that first event screen, just swipe down, let it refresh, because there's other stuff that's being added and those those dates change. And we're getting told that we, we need to leave the stage, so we got ten more questions before we'll leave. No, no, I wait, wait, no, no. I need the mindless fact totem first. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for using the application. Follow us on Twitter, leave us feedback, and I hope it's useful. That was the whole reason that we built it, is we wanted something. So it works for us, but if it doesn't work for you, it's not you know, it's not as cool. So um, yeah, so download it, download us, download it, and let us know what you think, okay? Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe. Nice. Dead outro. Yeah, um, that was it um, regarding this stress testing episode and we watched a video from the DEF CON about the official DEF CON app and now I actually know what it's about. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was somewhat fun to watch this talk but I, yeah, not too informative <laughs> to be honest. Root. Um, yeah, but um, also my progress with breeding the cows was like shit. <laughs> but um, I guess we need a lot of more um, episodes um, to to get some um, cows on here, and I probably need a client or something to to show the TPS. Um, to do better um yeah stress testing but um i would just yeah go by by the feeling of the of the gameplay um yes so that's it for this episode and um make sure to join on this freely reachable server um called laser Land. it's a unmoderated server there are no in-game um, accounts with any more powers like operators or something so um, in the case somebody hacks my accounts even if I'm maintaining the server there will be no in-game administrators as you can see I have no permissions um, I don't even know if this is a correct way to test it because um, yeah I haven't been operator in a while um, yeah, that was, as always, a super long outro. Um, the domain is zillywoon.com. Um, yes, then come and check it out. And 
I would say. Um, see you in the next episode of this advertisement series. And now that I'm like repeating this outro, I'm, I, I can uh, yeah slowly rem remember what I what I used to do in the in the German series if anyone cares. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I enjoyed the English version and I guess I will keep it in English because um, yeah, I think it makes more sense. I doubt there are like any German speaking in game players, so if anyone who um plays on the server wants to watch the owner like fail in the game, um it might be uh, useful for them to have it in a understandable language and not in uh, German. Um yeah, so um I guess that's actually it and bye. <laughs> ten out of ten outro. <laughs>